P.S. says Jesus' death replaces consequences. I think it carried away sin, thereby preventing consequences. P.S.A. claims that God's forgiveness requires and his sacrifice contains retribution. To hide the lack of validity for these claims, they use all kinds of verses. I'm here to give you a better way to justify God, free you from having to attribute P.S. to him. Not pressing charges is not just fair, it's more than fair, more glorious. He shows off God. You can do that when the ball's in your court, but sometimes there's other people involved. P.S. knows this. David says, against the only have I sinned. Without God, no man is worthy to cast a stone. So it seems that the ball is in his court. It's up to him to forgive. Anything that he okays is approved by him. To not press charges would have all the glory of justice, if not more, because it all belongs to him. There's nobody else that God has to avenge for, for all have sinned against him. And if God were to avenge all of us for the sake of each other, who would stand? Or else, if all this was put on Christ, what glory is that? Do not the heathens do the same for their friends? Yea, we know that ultimately God is gracious. We know that retributive wrath is not ultimate in God, unless toward unbelievers. P.S. knows this, but they add frustration within God for us to get rid of or not put there to begin with. For why would God spend his son's blood only to show us that enemies are worth revenging? You know that he died while every one of us were still sinners. PSA claims that God's forgiveness requires and his sacrifice contains retribution. These claims are not valid. Christ actually only carried away our sin without being properly punished for them. Oblation, not retribution. Of course, you might loosely say that you punished yourself to get in shape. Numbers 5.8 show that the atonement is not mixed with recompense. Christ's body was cut off with sin, curse. Thus, he was made sin and our curse. That's what he takes away, despite also being cursed and physically dying. His blood was the price, not retribution. Why does it say blood, not death? God, because of the sacrifice. God was separating us from sin in his mind. So there's no need for him to replace us. That would be prevented. Sins are removed. Sins are removed because the logically uncontradictory God can't be family with people who are in their contradictions. Logic is over law, for order requires communication. God doesn't logically contradict himself, so he doesn't pardon the unbeliever. And his wrath is only for the unbeliever. But he actually loves us. Therefore, just as Noah's covenant principally declares God's righteousness despite us, God was satisfied to make sacrifice for us, spending his blood on atonement, not recompense. By those stripes unto death, he carried away our contradictions with his limited part, the body of Christ. Moreover, his forgiveness was morally unpaid and wholehearted, and it was more than we could steal of his. This reasoning of us to be righteous through the true reason or changed our relationship with God reconciles us into spiritual marriage. Christ's blood was spent, ridding, not recompensing sin. Christ used his body to beat sin to death, not to pay for it, not to pay it out. Contradictions go unsolved, unpaid. Instead, they're revealed, split from us, and killed. That's why God took on a limited part. Satan's a pawn. God uses evil for good.